sure most of you have already kind of heard this so this is not going to be new to any of you guys watching the stream unfortunately but i just wanted to cover it myself and kind of give my overall impressions as to the whole affair because i thought it was absolutely hilarious when this whole thing went down in the first place anyway i thought this is absolutely absolutely hilarious so it involves brendan shaw v um, andrew schultz and this is directly from bgl aka mark harley's mouth and i don't think we would have ever heard about this story if he didn't reveal it so whatever i think about the dude and however lame and corny he might be to me i still think that is incredibly incredibly awesome from him so round of applause for bgl for revealing an absolutely incredible amount of news information and gossip that we would have never known about so Big up BGL for providing that absolute amazing, amazing bit of information. But um, the information at hand here that I want to talk about is as follows. If I can get up on the screen, bear me one second. But I think it's pretty, 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 pretty um, sensational when it comes to dealing with these guys and how they go about um, interacting with each other. And again, like I said, I don't think it's something we would have known about if it wasn't for BGL. So we have to kind of give him credit for kind of revealing it. But it does kind of highlight a lot of the things I think we've spoken about on the stream, about how they act and with each other and just in general and just how weird it is between them and the dynamic and why certain people can you know have basic can kind of run amok around the industry because of who they're basically associated with and linked with so this is courtesy of bgl they posted on the fire and the kids subreddit and he said the following okay since you guys have been having fun in response to my shoe video i'll tell you a story of the andrew Schultz beef warning this isn't a story designed to make Papa look bad. That could be in your interpretation, but it also gives you some insight into how Schultz's brain, that's not flattering. Interesting, right? So clearly he's saying, hey, I'm not Brendan Schultz's friend anymore. I don't like him and I've got this big tour, but also be warned, this story isn't going to make Brendan look bad. It's going to make him actually look good. So, you know, be wary if you're kind of coming to hating him already. He's not the enemy here. So, Brendan had an idea for a Gringo Pappy promo video. He wanted to essentially make a parody of the Dave Chappelle promo with Morgan Freeman, where they were driving in a truck and Freeman is doing a voiceover and Dave gets annoyed and reveals he's actually next to him in a truck. So for Brendan's version, he hired Bruce Buffer a, at a friend rate, but still at 10K plus. I think for the day, plus production expenses, the whole thing was estimated to be 15K. I love that bit about the story. I love the fact that in LA or in Hollywood, even if you know somebody and you're a friend and they've known each other for a while, Brendan's been in the UFC, Buffer's probably caught some of his fights, they've been around the industry, Buffer came on the podcast early on, I think Brendan went on his podcast too, they're clearly familiar with each other, but still, even if you're friends with somebody, they're still going to charge you, like high in numbers, and I would imagine 10k for, for Bruce Buffer to do a voiceover, or that, to do whatever he's going to do, that promo, probably isn't too far off from his actual normal rate, maybe it's double, maybe, but half rate, half price for as friends rate, as mates rate, sorry, is still pretty high. <laughs> People get to the money in LA. They get to the absolute money. So the concept is virtually the same. Brendan's driving through the hills of Calabasas and uh, Bruce hypes up his special in the patented voice and terms. The shoot goes great, but didn't get to see the final product. But by all accounts, it was just what Brendan wanted. This was closer to when Chappelle released his special July 2022 as Brendan was. Now, the only thing that's interesting to me about this is that Brendan loves to talk out two sides of his mouth or maybe change his mind all the time. Because there was a time when Brendan was saying that how he was kind of annoyed that he keeps getting called a, you know, a fighter, UFC thing. He kind of, kind of went to push away from that kind of image and went to, you know, assert himself as an actual stand up. So to have your special be introduced by, um, what you call it, by, a, you know, legendary UFC f announcer or just, a, you know, a combat sports announcer overall, it was a bit weird, isn't it? It doesn't really make any sense in my opinion, especially if you don't want to be known as a UFC guy. And also just in terms of the theme of Gringo Pappy, there's nothing that links the UFC to, you know, whatever, to, to that special whatsoever. I don't think he even does any UFC jokes, does he? Any fighting jokes. It's mostly him trying to, you know, do hacky jokes about his Mexican family, basically. Um, it's not really anything to do with fighting. So it would have been a weird promo to have anyway, even if it did go through. But that's the first part of the story. Um, the second part. So closer to when Chappelle released his special in July 2022, as Brendan was initially going to release his, as Brendan was initially going to release it in in the fall, so it would still be somewhat fresh in people's minds. Apparently, word got back to Schultz. And this is the weird bit, right? Bruce Buffer is doing this promo shoot thing for Brendan. It's with T Fat K. It's for a Gringo Pappy thing. I'm assuming some comedians filmed their special at the same time, but still, 
whatever you're working on unless you tell somebody why would they find out you know what i mean or unless you're maybe using the same production people i don't know but usually they're all shooting with their own people they've got their own guys usually whoever sh- shoots your podcast you you'll rope them into you shooting your special you'll ask your producer to be your fucking executive producer so it, weird but anyway somehow we'll go back to schultz not sure how he texted Bri- brendan like it was an emergency very urgent and demanding like text me back asap urgent in all caps i remember the word urgent was used he texted twice brendan was shooting a king in the sting at the time and didn't respond immediately so after the episode wraps up he steps into another room at thick boy to call schultz i like how um also uh what's his name the bgo even though he hates brendan he still makes sure to include the free c's there right he has to respect what you're you know, where your bread was once buttered. You can't ever respect the disrespect the gang, even if you get kicked out of it. Um, to cool Schultz, he picks up the phone, red hot. My best recollection of what was relayed. We got a problem. Huh? Brendan, you stole my idea, dude. Huh? What? Bruce Buffer, dude. Yeah. He's going around the country opening my shows and is on my special. Dude, relax. This is a totally different idea. So I like the fact that despite Brendan being a really scary UFC fighter guy, a legit UFC heavyweight, don't matter what you think about his skills, he legitimately made his career out of getting into an octagon and fighting guys in shorts, right? With knees and elbows and kicks and stuff and strangulation, like super scary stuff. And he did it for a while. He wasn't necessarily the greatest at it, but still he could fuck the regular person up, you know, in seconds. It wouldn't even be a fair fight. But I still like the fact that despite that intimidating thing he has going on with the fighting, these comedians have such an ego and have such um, a kind of grandiose sense of self that they would willingly get on the phone with another man and come on the phone hot. Not even trying to be like, chill and hey man what's going on i heard about this thing and trying to talk it out he came on the phone hot already ready to press him ready to get like shouty shouty he's like thinking hold on with the dude when you get in an argument i think jordan peterson talks about it a lot like the reason why men are able to kind of mediate themselves in arguments is because there's always that underlying threat of like physical violence you know you can't go too over the line with guys because you know especially if you know them in person it can always go left very quickly (laughs) so the fact that this guy would willingly get on the phone brendan and want to stick it on him and be like you know you know kind of aggro says everything about comedians and also says everything about brendan how he's kind of looked upon people don't respect him really in that regard obviously the joe rogan thing connection is really there but in terms of a respect factor they don't really have any for him that they really want to get on the phone and immediately go and kind of go to the kind of you know worst possible scenario you're stealing my idea it's like come on man get a load of yourself next one he says, um, dude, relax. This is a totally different idea. You can't use the promo, he says. Brendan's trying to fight for his life for this promo. To, he, like, he's probably caught off guard. Doesn't he know what's going on? Um, number one, we have to say Bruce Buffer snitched. Let's say that first. How else is fucking Andrew Schultz going to find out about his promo? They're not on the same fucking coast. They don't share producers or video guys. Like the only, the only kind of constant in the show was Bruce Buffer. So Bruce Buffer's a chatty patty. Bruce Buffer cashed in the 15K from brendan another 15 from fucking schultzy and he's sitting somewhere copacabana beach sipping on my ties and you know slipping his little johnny into no i'm not gonna go there but you know what i mean like Bruce buffer snitched and he got paid <laughs> this is what happened anyway he said you schultz allegedly says you can't use the promo brendan replies the fuck first of all i just spent 15k on this i'm not just gonna dump it because you're upset secondly if anyone has a claim to bruce buffer again this is grown adult men fighting over bruce buffer right fighting over him it would be me he used to announce my fights and I've been, and I've been friends with him longer. Friends is a loose term in LA, but if you know someone, they're your friend. And allegedly, um, Schultz says this, you don't want this smoke. And Brendan in his voice, excuse me? <laughs> you know, he says, right, um, holding his chest. That's not nice. And then Schultz says, you don't want this smoke. Now, I think Schultz did that like this you don't want this smoke like a really like you know sassy black woman which is ridiculous right because he's the whitest of the whitest but obviously because he grows up in new york and you know he went to a private school even though he went to a private school and he looks the way he does he somehow thinks he can you know use that kind of uh, mannerisms and stuff and it look look corny whatever he did it but the fact that he does this in real life without irony like it's, it's one thing doing on the podcast and acting sassy and using you know um 
hood lexicon and whatnot and slang, but to do it in a serious manner, like actually you don't want this smoke, like is legitimately one of the most redacted things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like legitimately redacted, like legitimately. And again, I said to us, I emphasize this. He's saying all this stuff. You don't want this smoke to a former UFC heavyweight. So you want about Brendan Schaub, but he could legitimately beat Schultz up with one hand tied behind his back. Legit. (laughs) yeah and he's telling you that what this smoke like excuse me anyway this set brendan off i think rightfully as it came off as a threat of some sort and obviously bjl was there in the corner like that what's up what's that what did shot say right bjl's ready to step in as well so you're gonna have to fight bgl with his size eight feet you're gonna have to (laughs) fight brendan with a nicotine patch in his mouth like imagine brendan beating you up brendan will beat you up looking the way he does now face all inflamed um nicotine patches in their mouth smelling like whiskey um you know stains all over his t-shirt weird jeans with elastic at the bottom of them weird trainers that are terrible don't fit properly like he'd he'd beat you up in the most ridiculous outfit ever like that's how embarrassing it would be (laughs) it continues um put me on the speakerphone i will beat the shit and so so he put me on speakerphone I will beat the sh- fuck out of you and everyone else in that fucking room who's listening into this phone call. So I think Brendan heard Schultz put him on speakerphone or something, right? I think so. What? And then obviously Schultz being the big pussy that he is, right? You don't go on the phone and talk to men in a certain way and then try and act like you weren't doing that thing. He goes, whoa, ha, ha, no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant you don't want these problems from the comic, com- comic community when they see that you stole my idea. So now Schultz is trying to you know kind of appeal to uh brendan's need to not be hated and to not be ganged up upon online and to have you know another another kind of a uh, stick to beat him down with via his trolls or whatnot and he's trying to appeal to that side and tell him hey i'm gonna shame you out of not doing this so that you don't get any more hassle online that you already get but if i'm brendan I'm thinking, no, you didn't mean that. You came on the phone and tried to sun me. You came on the phone and tried to flex. And then I called your bluff. And now you're suddenly talking about, hey, bro, chill, man. Chill, chill, chill. This is a prank. It's a prank. It's a prank. No, no, it's not a prank. Bring your wife down here too. I'll flip in, beat you up in front of, I'll beat you up in front of your wife and take your wife back home. That's what Brennan should have said, really. Right? Do you know what I mean? Bring your wife back. Bring your wife down here. Bring that little two-seater car that you drive around in. And whoever loses this fight... <laughs> whoever wins this fight sorry gets to take your car and your wife (laughs) that's what he should have said to him right and whoever loses has to take a cash (laughs) but yeah let's continue i think um i think he had other members of the sorry i think he had other members of flagrant two chime in and say yes it's an idea theft um so brendan and goes into the king and the sting room and asks the other guys for their opinion brendan explains the situation and asks he asks so the lead, so in the room at the time we think in the sting he asked chris Delia, he said no nah, that's fucking stupid shots and fear says man fuck andrew schultz so that's interesting to see fear vaughn that isn't necessarily the biggest fan of Andrew Schultz, which will make a lot of sense though, because Andrew Schultz's demeanor, how he kind of goes on, you imagine it will kind of piss, you know, a uh, fear of one off, but that's pretty cool to see fear sticking up for Brendan and just calling it as he sees it. And that's pretty cool. Um, it goes as follows. Okay. Well, we got to figure this out. Yeah. We, yeah. You know what? How about we go to a neutral third party? We can ask Rogan for his opinion. And he says, okay, but whatever he says, go. So Schultz is clearly knowing that Rogan will side for him because Rogan's always on the side of like integrity and not stealing things. And, you know, if anything, Rogan's got more morals and principles when it comes to stand up comedians and their flipping material than he actually does with what they get up to in their quote unquote private life. If a, if a comic is accused of rape, is accused of sexual harassment, is accused of whatever they're accused of, suddenly he's mute. He doesn't have any opinion, especially with his friends. Doesn't have anything. No comment. No comment. But Joe Biden slurs his words a couple of times. Um, someone steals a joke or premise or maybe shits on someone special. He's out with that finger. He's out with that finger, mate. But if you say <laughs> anything about their lives, he doesn't want to say anything. But anyway, regardless, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes. But I also find it hilarious that these guys are kind of going to fucking judge Rogan to, for them to kind of quell and, to, and you know, and about to mediate their fucking beefs, which, uh, again, points to me understanding why rogan's the way he is i've always said from my point of view i think rogan's pretty cool i think he's pretty chill for the level of you know fame he has 
and the fact that he's a multi-millionaire, maybe close to a billionaire, he comes across as a pretty chill dude. I think only recently in the last few years, as he's getting old, as he's getting, as he's kind of advancing in age, and he's becoming more conservative in his politics, and he's becoming a bit more of a grumpier, older dude, he starts to become less likable. But I think that necessarily, that always tends to happen when you're an older guy that's amassed a lot of wealth, right? You just become a little bit embittered and whatnot, and, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstrap type of person. So, you know, it's a bit annoying, but it kind of is what it is. But I also understand why maybe his ego can be a little bit big, because essentially he's got a whole community of like grown men, like men with families, right? Legitimately, Tom Segura moved his entire family from LA to Austin just because of Joe Rogan. Like these guys are like on another planet. Like they, they follow this man around like he's fucking, like he's Gandhi or something. It's really, really horrible. So I'm not surprised that he really does think he's that guy when he's got these grown men on his phone bickering about their about their flipping inner working arguments and stuff whatever fighting over certain things he has to kind of come in and mediate because they generally do need him like genuine it's a genuine thing they actually do need joe rogan without him they're all going to be f-u-c-k'd so it makes a lot more sense anyway it continues my recollection is they got off the phone lay it all out to rogan and he says well i understand both sides but you're trying to get brennan to do something that he doesn't have to do so how about Brendan, you don't air the promo, but Schultz has to pay you 15k for production costs. They agree. Schultz never pays Brendan. <laughs> that seems to be the start of some of the tension. That's hilarious. That that's the case because I don't think we've seen them together since then, have we? Really? Uh, maybe that's why they're kind of not really as cool as they were before. And also, there's that story that um, B. Joe said that he felt like no. B. Joe said Brendan said that he felt ambushed when he went on the, the flagrant podcast when they were in their old studio and they asked him about the drug walk with Annie Liederman. He felt a little bit ambushed and stuff and they were kind of clearly trolling and asking questions about from the homeless cats and blah, blah, blah. So there may be some ongoing beef, but this is quite karmic in some respects because Brennan also was the guy who bum-rushed uh, flipping uh, Andrew Schultz's wedding. I don't think he was invited from what I remember. He wasn't invited and the story goes according to some cats, the theory is that that um, Brendan wanted to see Rogan. He hadn't seen Rogan in person for for ages and he waited to rekindle that relationship by seeing him in person and he went to bum rush the wedding because everyone's going to be there and take pictures and shit. So he basically dragged his wife there and they kind of went to the wedding together even though they weren't really invited. Um, that basically happened. I think even Schultz maybe revealed it because I think Bobby Lee felt away Bobby Lee felt a bit annoyed that he didn't get invited and said, oh, how did fucking Brennan Schultz get invited? I don't. And I think Schultz basically said, I didn't invite him. Like, he just basically came along um, kind of thing. So it's funny that the guy that you kind of went and bum rushed his wedding to kind of support and to clout chase is also the same guy that's going to get on the phone to you and start giving it to you because he thinks you stole these fucking shitty Bruce Buffer announcer thing, or which I think is, but for both, it's, for me, the, the cringiest part of the whole special was the Bruce Buffer. Bruce Buffer. The Bruce Buffer. He's got a, bussies bussing the <laughs> most cringy part for me of Andrew Schultz's special was the whole grandiose Bruce Buffer in introducing him the way he was introducing him like he's a fighter that was really cringe there's nothing fighting you know about Andrew Schultz or even his comedy he's not really kind of that kind of guy at least with Brendan he's a former UFC fighter that makes more sense even then with Gungo Papi wouldn't have made sense either with the theme of the show it just doesn't make any sense why they went to use him it just was maybe a clout thing a marketing gimmick for me, I didn't like it either side. But I just find it hilarious that Schultz ran off on the plug, um, didn't pay him the, the 15K, and they've maybe never been as close as they were before because of this. And obviously, Rogan is the guy that had to kind of mediate the whole thing. Absolute ridiculous, absolutely special needs in the highest amount and really, really cringe. And also goes to show just how redacted these guys are. And that's what I mean sometimes when they kind of like to bemoan the regular civilian for not understanding jokes. Regular civilians are this. Regular civilians don't do that. But when's the last time, as a regular civilian, have you gone and text a friend, a neutral party, to try and sort out your argument with somebody? Maybe the neutral party steps in, but is there really somebody that you all kind of kowtow and bow, and bow down to and kiss their feet and whatever they say goes? Who's that person in your friendship group? Any person we have in my friendship group that kind of tries to become the judge and jury or tries to become the leader, you get teased. People just take the piss out of you. Like, who do you think you are? Do you know what I mean? We're all grown people here. We're going to make our own decisions soon enough. But the fact that they all kind of, you know, bow to Flippin' Rogan and, you know, are, you know, inform him of every major life decision they're going to make. Because don't think this, this stops here. Don't think these guys are not the same guys that would call Rogan up and say, hey, I'm dating that girl. Remember that girl introduced, to, introduced you to at the comedy store? I'm going to propose, man. What do you think? Don't be surprised if that's the thing. Don't be surprised if this guy's asking, hey, man, I'm about to name my kids, you know, 
um, Sony and flipping Vibramium. What do you think, man? What's a better name? Don't be surprised. That's the thing. Hey, man, I've got this house I'm buying, man. What do you, what do you think? Should I get this one or that one? Like, that's what they go to him for. Rogan's legitimately that guy for these people. So that explains why Rogan's head is a bit big. That explains why these guys are the way they are. And that also explains why I've never really been impressed ever in the slightest. Like people always ask me all the time on the stream, oh, would you interview this person, interview that person? I don't care in the slightest for these people. The only person I actually want to interview that I would love to interview would be someone like a Kate Quigley. Like legitimately, I'd love to interview Kate Quigley to find out if those, you know, still using cocaine stories are true after like all their friends died after, you know, a binge session. I would absolutely love that. But all these other guys, like I'm not impressed. You know what I mean? Like they act like they worked really hard because they have to podcast for four hours for one day as if that's equivalent to working, you know, a construction job or working in an office or working in a retail store or a supermarket or a factory. Like they legitimately think like sitting in a cold water bathtub or sitting in a sauna is legitimately equivalent to like being in a fight or working out. These guys are on another planet. They don't really, you know, they don't really um, interest me in that regard as personalities. They obviously provide us with good entertainment, most of it free. That's great. But apart from that, I'm not really that impressed. So this definitely explains it for me. But I thought that story was absolutely hilarious. I really, really did. And obviously, uh, what's his face? Uh, BGL provided some proof of the whole affair. And that it actually did happen uh, by providing us with this absolute beauty of a picture. So you can see that the whole shoot and idea that Brendan had planned actually did happen. But it just didn't air it. So this is the video clip of Brendan. I'm think. He's driving that new Ford Bronco that he purchased, which is funny as well. So you would have had all that in the show. So if you hated Gringo Pappy the way it was with the cutouts, you would have had to seen a shot of Brendan Shaw rocking up to his uh, new Ford Bronco, the 2022 model, opening it up. There may be, there, most likely there was a shot of him walking to the car, the back shot that he likes, right? Not back shots, but the back shot. I mean, he likes that kind of, what's, what's someone called in the stream chat? The superhero... Um, the superhero angle of him walking up to his truck, uh, you know, texting something funny on the phone or something, and then opening the car, and then you know Bruce Buffer and then him like w driving in it and uh, coming here and here and Bruce Buffer saying these things, and it pans over and he's actually in the car. You would have had to see all that before it went to the show. So I don't know how they would have switched the scenes. Maybe he pulls up to, maybe he drives all the way to the flipping club, which he doesn't do because he takes a plane everywhere. But if he drives to the club, it maybe would have gone dark. And then you got to see him get changed into his off-white clothes and he just come, jumps on stage. So if you hated Gringo Pappy the way it was, just imagine how awkward this skit would have been at the start of it. <laughs> he was saying in the chat, release the Brendan cut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big up Kevin, release the Brendan cut. That would have been awesome. But I think it would have looked so awkward. That show, that clip, Gringo Pappy is already awkward, right? With whoever the black guy is introducing him. This is a song that Brendan Shaw, whatever that sh that fucking horrible little brows rap song at the start, it would be absolutely terrible, man. So I'm actually happy this happened the way it did because I think he would have made the special far worse. So maybe it was for the best he didn't get approval to to to, to fucking uh, use that skit. But also Schultz, pay the man, pay the guy his 15k. You got the you, you've got it. You obviously flaunting it and stuff. Pay the man his 15k. You got all the all the views you need to get off the fucking special, and you've probably gained it all back. Give him the monies, man. Give Brendan Shaw his monies. He's owed. Give Brendan Shaw the money he's owed. Um, but yeah, absolutely love it, man. Absolutely 